Hi everyone, here we are again taking a look at uh, some tempo related features within Pro Tools. In the last video we looked at how to calculate tempo from a loop and in this video we'll take a look at how to make a loop actually fit your pre-existing tempo. Um, I have a small example here and the tempo is set to a hundred BPM as you can see up here in the tempo ruler. I'll just play that for you real quick so you can get an idea. Okay, so what we'd like to do is actually bring in a loop and we're going to use our um, workspace browser to search for this. And now I already have a browser open, so I'm just going to bring that one to the front. Like we looked at last time, I'm just navigating to find some audio files that, uh, that seem appealing. There we go. But uh, you can already tell that this uh, loop is actually playing quite a bit faster than, uh, than what our session is, but we'll deal with that in a minute. First, let's just get it into our session. So we'll just click and drag it over to our tracks bin. All right, now I'm gonna send this browser to the back. All right, so let's just solo this loop that we have here. Okay, so um, just like before, the first thing is just to kind of listen and get an idea if this audio file, if this loop is actually looping correctly. So just kind of count off in your head. One, two. Now, just like before, you might have to do some editing of that. So uh, we'll go ahead and just kind of trim this thing up to get the actual loop that we want. I'll do this in slip mode because it makes it a lot easier than having to conform to a grid which is already at our pre-existing tempo. Okay, so now we have our loop trimmed, and uh, let's just kind of take a listen to it. All right, so it's obviously not in time with the existing session. So if we listen to these two things together, it might sound like this. Okay. Obviously, everything's kind of off time. So the first thing we're going to want to do is use a feature of Pro Tools called Elastic Audio. You can see right down here below the uh, Track Display button and the Voice Allocation Automation button, there's this area here. This is the Elastic Audio plugin button. Now, you do have four different types of Elastic Audio based on the material, but anything drum and rhythmic related would be the rhythmic algorithm. Activate it, and it actually does a scan of the audio in the background. <coughs> and um, what you can actually do is t look at your track display button here and when you click on it you actually see two new options that become available after you activate Elastic Audio called Warp and Analysis View. Now if I switch over to Warp View this is where you can actually kind of see some of the power of Elastic Audio. You can actually using your grabber tool when you move it over a region that is in Warp View notice how every time you go over one of the uh, analyzation lines it actually turns into an arrow. Well, you can actually grab the region this way and you can actually manipulate it in terms of timing. Uh, this will obviously affect playback speed and it kind of looks like a rubber band, hence the name Elastic Audio. So I'm going to put my session back into grid mode because remember things always line up to grid lines in grid mode. Um, so now when I snap it to an actual grid boundary, now 
hopefully should be on time with the uh, rest of my session. Now, <clears throat> it kind of is, it kind of isn't, and this is kind of the beauty of Elastic Audio. Uh, what we're going to do is kind of go in a little bit deeper into this. So let's just zoom in. A few of these hits might be a little bit off, um, hence the nature of groove. And anytime you're working with uh, with loops, just uh, a different performer is always going to have a different groove. But you can come in here and you can actually grab these individual analyzation lines and move them. Now notice what just happened. If you look at this region, when I move this over to the grid line, the end over here got a skew. So let's undo that. What you can do is if you double click on any of these analyzation lines, you can lock them in place and you can see a tiny little anchor point show up when you double click on it. So this prevents that analyzation line from moving around. So now I can go to other ones and kind of treat it like an accordion and line these up to more precise grid points more accurately uh, matching the groove of my actual song. All right. So let's take a listen. Okay, could use a little bit more just by these individual ones being moved around. But this is the power of Elastic Audio. It not only lets you stretch things, but it lets you uh, analyze and manipulate things to make sure that it not only fits in time, but it also fits in groove with what you have going on. Um, let's take a listen. All right. So now we can go back into our waveform view. Now, since we've manipulated this around, you can see that Elastic Audio is still running. If you were to uh, disable Elastic Audio, which after your production is, is completed and you want to get onto the mix phases, you always do want to turn this off because this will preserve power in your computer to let you do more mix-oriented things. When you click on the uh, Elastic Audio plugin and you go to None or, di or Disable Elastic Audio, it will ask you whether or not you want to revert back to the original audio file, meaning before Elastic Audio changes happened, or if you want to commit to this new way that's been aligned based on you moving around uh, and playing with Elastic Audio. So I'm going to choose to commit in this case. So now we get a brand new audio file that is in time the way that, uh, that we told it to be using the Elastic Audio function. And it's now in time with our song. I can uh, use the duplicate feature at this point in time to let this fill up a little bit more time. Or, for those of you a little more intrepid, you can actually use the loop feature <clears throat> and just tell it how many number of loops you want it to have. In this case, let's say six. Oh, we kind of missed one. That's okay. Let's just bring another one over here. All right, so now we have our new audio files that have been brought into the session have been tempo matched to match the tempo of our existing session that we have and when we listen to it it should sound uh, pretty good I guess it's all a matter of taste after all so uh, hope you had a little fun and I look forward to seeing you again soon